Hello, Leo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Leo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It's totally free, it doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Leo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And here is a Ten of Swords. Something is um, being torn down. I think it's something that is... I almost wonder, I, I feel, what I'm feeling, uh, about to put the cards away, we got more cards than this, uh, but I'm feeling that there's something in front of you that's like blinding you or limiting you. I feel like there's a, um, a curtain in front of you, and I feel like you're tearing it down. Yeah? I feel like there's something, there's like a, there's like a veil over your eyes or something, and we're just, we're kind of, we're removing that. Yeah? It's a strange feeling, um, but it's, it's a good feeling. The light might be a little bit bright to begin with. Let's put this into some context here. We've got a princess of pentacles. Um, oh, and an ace of pentacles. Uh, oh, six of wands. Very nice energy. I feel like it's something... Um, I, oh, nine of swords. I don't know if it's if you've been... If someone's gaslighting you or if there's just some kind of a... Um, some kind of a situation where... Uh, Gosh, this is a difficult one. That somebody's somebody's pulling the wool over your eyes, right? Um, let's see what else we've got here. We've got your power card in the environment. We have a six of wands here behind you. This is something that you really, I think, have had enough. There's the ten. There's the ten of wands. We've had enough, right? And the tower. Yes, you are reaching this breakthrough. You are removing the hoodwink. You're you're clawing the wool from your eyes, you're taking off the, the glasses, the taking off the blindfold, whatever this is. Um, it's not being revealed to you. You are, you are penetrating into it. You are tearing the curtains down. It's not peeking behind the veil. You're tearing that veil down. Right? It could be, we could be talking about uh, a form of enlightenment. It could be a very sudden, like, uh, kundalini experience. But I feel that it has something to do with your physical environment. Maybe a, not, not so much a living situation, but I feel like a business kind of situation or career or how you're relating with your community. Now, maybe you're retired, right? Maybe career's not, not an issue for you. There's some other group of people that you're involved with. It could be a neighborhood, a community center, a, an organization, a charity. I don't know. It could be a, a religious body, right? I feel like um, I feel like you're you're really using your own strength to break through something, to get yourself out of a metaphoric prison, right? You're you're. You're busting out of this thing, whatever it is. And this is really strong energy. This is really exciting. I'm feeling like the adrenaline already, like we just can't wait to get started with this. Let's select the mystery card. <clears throat> this, um, wow, this, this really does feel, um, well, it feels like a prophecy, right? Especially with that tower at the end. It's almost like you are just kind of, you're just breaking out into this energy and... Um, I think taking the world by surprise, taking the world by storm. Um, you're seeing the truth and you are speaking the truth. We could be talking about a, a spiritual awakening. So here's the mystery card, Alien, Simon, Mork, Ripley. That card's not going anywhere until the very end. Uh, but it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation that we need. If at any point during the reading you feel like you know what that card is or you have a hunch, put that hunch down in the comments. All right, let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise, okay? Whew. All right, let's take a look around the room one more time. We, no major arcana over here, but we've got 
the activation of your power, the breakthrough of your kind of your whole spirit, your your essential Leoness is is coming through in a very strong way. Okay, very strong way. Uh, we've got obviously some fire. We've got we do have some water. Interesting, we have a queen and a knight um, of cups here. So I don't know if this is. If this could, we could be talking about a, a personal relationship. We could be talking about something to do with, um, gosh, well, there, there's some possibilities here. I'm almost getting a maternal energy. I'm almost wondering if we're like discovering something about like a family history, a family issue, a family secret, something like that. But it's something that I think has been kind of holding you back. It's almost like, um, it's almost like something that your parents never told you. Now you're discovering it on your own, and it's just, it's, it feels empowering, right? Um, and I don't know, it's like, like no one ever told you that you were royalty, you know? And you finally, you're discovering that on your own, and it's really a huge life change, you know? Um, very interesting, very interesting dynamic that I'm seeing here. So we've got that. We've got our fire. We've got our water. We've, we, we do have our air. Um, and, of course, we have some earth energy. Very good earth energy, too, I might add. It feels to me like whatever this breakthrough is, it's giving you access to the whole world. It's almost like no one ever told you that you had a long-lost relative, and now suddenly they left you a bunch of money. Uh, and it could, it could literally be that because of this princess of pentacles. This is unlimited resources. This could be whatever is behind this veil, whatever is behind that curtain is giving you the resources that you need to start your life, to start this, you know, this big next phase of your life. It's kind of giving you maybe like a new beginning or it's letting you start over somewhere uh, of your own choice, really, right? Very interesting energy. Very, and now it's kind of starting to become a little bit more clear. And I think this is going to be really, really good for you. Really amazing. Um, where to even start here? Let's talk about the 10. The, because the 10 is, well, the key word for this card is ruin, right? Uh, something is crumbling. There was a, a worldview, a belief system. There was a, a picture of reality. There was... Um, there was information, there was a reality around us um, that's starting to kind of fall away. It's starting to break down. It's starting to not make sense. You're starting to see through the cracks of something. Yeah. And I think, I think your perception is changing. Perhaps it has something to do with this, what I kind of feel is like a windfall. I feel like it's a sudden sudden realization that you've got all of these resources and I'm not I'm not predicting anything but what it feels to me is that uh, one day you're just kind of getting by the next day you're like insanely rich you know it feels like it's an overnight kind of thing that now is real it, it's allowing you to realize how limited your worldview has been like if this was, the, these are the bars that were holding you back. This is the, that kind of uh, metaphorical cage that we're in. But now, whatever this breakthrough is, whatever this, whatever this princess of pentacles is, if it's money, if it's resources, if it's opportunity, um, you're realizing how free you are now. You know? And it's, it's unfortunate that we have to think of money that way. Right? But financial freedom and money and resources allows you to do a, a lot of different things in life. Um, you know, life is different when you have it than when you don't. Okay? And there are many degrees in between, right? I've always been earning just enough to get by. And uh, so there wasn't a lot of opportunity, you know? Um, and what I mean is I never had the resources to go or move or live or do what I wanted to do. You know, I had enough that I can survive here where I am, but to think about getting all my stuff and moving somewhere um, wasn't ever really in the cards for me. At least not, you know, 
for most of my life anyway. Uh, of course, I grew up in California. I did ha have the opportunity to move out here to the northern Midwest um, and kind of start things over again. So I understand how some of this, this energy might be flowing. It's not necessarily this is going to be just a lump sum of money that now you can go live wherever you want. But this might be an opportunity through, you know, through a person, through a job or something that's going to offer you the, the means to start over, to relocate. Maybe this is relocation. Yeah. And there, there is some kind of a dynamic going on with some of these court cards. I don't know if this is a mother figure. Um, I'm getting a bit of a, I'm getting a T name for someone close to this situation. But I don't know if this is maybe a spouse, if this is going to be a, um, you know, a, um, a family, you know, relationship. I'm almost wondering if it's a spouse, if it's a spouse thing. I don't know, you'll have to tell me what that, um, what, how that resonates with you. But the six of wands in the background, this is what's behind you. This is what's pushing you forward. And this is a lot of confidence. This is Jupiter in Leo. This is your, this is the, the magma within the volcano, and this is growing, and this is really the confidence that like every day you're just like, I need more out of life. You're just, you're growing too big for the fishbowl here, right? You're go, growing too big for the birdcage. Um, you're, you're growing, you know, too big for the, uh, for the mountain, I guess, right? Um, and well, the, tower card is kind of that mountain that's finally exceeded its the the magma that can't be held in by the mountain by the earth anymore right so to me it really does feel like your situation your life your environment is getting too small for you yeah and it really could be that you are succeeding in your career or you're just you're kind of developing as a spirit as a person and you have more and more ambition you have more and more of this kind of um these big ideas and this confidence, um, it's a real, it's a real ambition, you know. I'm kind of feeling there's a big tree somewhere for you. Do, is there a childhood connection with a very large tree? I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's an oak tree or an ash tree or something. It's very tall. Um, and I feel it's very, very big around, like it's, it's an old tree, you know. Um, I wonder if that has something to do with wanting to set down roots or having a little bit of apprehension leaving like the kind of family home or something or like where your family where your ancestors kind of set down roots if you're kind of moving on from that going going kind of your own own way also there's what's around your wrist something's on your wrist right now i don't know if it's a tattoo or if it's a bracelet i guess it could be a brace or one of those like copper bracelets like for i don't know sea seasickness or something i don't know what it is uh, but spirit's showing me something with the wrist. I don't know what that what that's about. Uh, I like the Ace of Pentacles underneath everything because this is this is starting again. This is kind of relocating, going somewhere new. Have you been planning a trip? Maybe that's part of this. Maybe maybe you've been planning a trip for a long time. Yeah. For some of you, this could be a separation or a divorce but not in a sad, melancholy, depressed way, in a liberating way, okay? For some of you, this could be, um, this is a very sensitive subject, I don't know if I should say this, getting, getting out from uh, underneath someone's kind of spell, right? Uh, and it could be a family member. It could be that... Um, It could be that there has, there has been a passing, okay? And this is very sensitive, and I, I, don't, I don't even know that I should say this. Sometimes it feels as if there has been a passing, and while that is unfortunate and, you know, um, we don't wish that on anyone, of course, um, but I almost feel as if there is a sense of liberation there for you. Right? That's a very sensitive thing, and maybe I shouldn't have said that but it's what's coming through for some of you. That there is this, it's kind of a bittersweet, you know? Um, because I feel like you have been 
kind of contained. Something's been containing. There's been some sort of wool or veil in front of your eyes. And it kind of feels like someone is trying to keep you um, small, trying to keep you um, kind of humble and kind of like without a lot of far-reaching ambitions, trying to just keep you close to home, you know, um, trying to keep you as a, like an underachiever almost. Yeah. And it could just be the world. It could be the town that you're in. It could be, you know, the belief system that you've been holding on to. Something, though. But that's being liberated. All of this creative force and fire is coming out of you right now. It really feels like a prophecy. We've got a nine of swords in the future position because, for one, this is, this is getting out of the cage, right? Because if we have this ten of swords and we break the cage open, well... Squeezing ourselves through the broken bars of the cage, we might get a few scratches. You know what I mean? Um, and so this to me represents the difficulty that it's going to really, the difficulty that it, it's that that's going to be there when you first make this move. Right? This is not an easy thing to go from a ten. Well to, well, to the ace, really. But we have to go through that nine. And this is just the pain of, like, of squeezing out of that cage. You're going to get scraped up by some of the broken bars. So this, to me, is, is the difficulty um, of the first kind of few stages of whatever this big move, big relocation. Maybe this is opening a business. Maybe this is, um, I don't know, whatever this is. Uh, it's a new path for you. Yeah, and I think it's going to be the most difficult right at the beginning. Uh, because it's going to be still like just kind of a fresh, you know, you, you, you rip a band-aid off. It's going to smart for a few minutes, but then it's going to be okay, you know. Uh, the wound underneath uh, is, is healed. You don't need to wear the band-aid anymore, you know. Now my cat's here to, uh, to visit us as well. I'll let her... Uh, stop by here and say hi. Well, I guess I won't let her. She, she, she lets me hold her for a moment or two during the readings lately. And I think it's because it's getting warmer a little bit now. Our winter here is really weird. It's starting to get warm again. Uh, so she's coming into the studio more often. I, I have to keep it cold in here just for these stupid cameras and lights and stuff. So, But she's here now, and she comes a lot in the spring and summertime to, to visit us. You might remember her from the summer. Um... Let's go to the path of the serpent now. I think this is a good segue. And as we do this, I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and it really helps out the channel, and I appreciate that. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, Spirit's showing me a lot of lamps. What's the connection with lamps? Um, do you collect, like, ornate lamps? Or does maybe this other person or the family home or childhood home or something have a lot of lamps like uh, I don't know just like old school like stained glass or just uh, some kind of ornate like desk lamps right I see a bunch of those maybe it's maybe it's part of like a furniture store or something like that something with lamps um, anyway let's talk about the uh, the night of of cups here. So we have the, the Queen of Cups and the Knight of Cups, and to me this is talking about the kind of um, the intimate connection between you and something in your environment. It's something that is overshadowing you in a way. It's something that is kind of is above you, right? And almost, I almost feel like kind of like lording over you a little bit or trying to be too involved in in your energy. Yeah, it could be a boss, it could be a spouse, it could be a parent. Right, uh, and then I think the um, this if this is your general energy, I think this is you desiring or really needing in your life uh, an outlet for some of this this force and fire that's in you, right? Because we said there's a lot of magma, and it's growing, uh, it's it's building up inside of this contained earth energy. Eventually, it's going to blow. Right, this is having a little bit of a like a pressure relief valve or something. This is fire and water, yeah. And this is you really needing an outlet, maybe a creative outlet. Maybe this is you in need of other people in your life instead of just that person. 
okay? And these cards aren't gender specific in any way, right? Um, but it's the idea that um, you're kind of un under the shadow of somebody else's emotions. And this is you really getting out of that and expressing yourself, sharing your feelings, offering your gift to the world in, in ways that feel right for you. This card's usually about the giving and receiving of, uh, of, of our gift, of affection, of love and kindness, right? So I almost wonder if this person was kind of like cutting you off or, or discouraging you from having friends or relationships of your own, okay? That might be part of this too. Uh, but this, I think, this is wonderful. This is you, you know, having those kinds of relationships, finding love and friendship and intimacy um, in in a lot of places, right? Like, and it's not, it doesn't have to be romantic. That's not what I mean. I mean the close personal bonds with people, with activities, with, with strangers, like just volunteering, doing charity work. Uh, doing your art or doing your work or being of service to people. Random acts of kindness, right? It doesn't have to be, um, you know, intimacy can come in many, many forms. Yeah. But I think this card is very good because it shows some of your creative fire energy being released, being expressed into the world. Yeah. And that, I think, is exactly what you need because maybe we don't really want to get to the negative tower card. We don't want to get to what would be the, the, the shadow side of the tower, which is um, a situation that just kind of blows up, you know, that we just, we have that big fight, that big argument, or there's, our life gets turned upside down, there's all this disruption, and we don't want the volcano to erupt and, like, destroy the town, right? We want to do something with that to use that energy in such a way that we are building and creating and not tearing down. We're tearing down the veil. We're taking the scales from our eyes, but we're not tearing down uh, our lives or anyone else's lives. We're not, we don't want this to be disruptive. We want it to be productive. The next card we see, of course, is your Leo energy. This is your power card. And this card is telling me that you are coming into your full energy, full confidence. You're becoming the best version of yourself. And this card I like a lot because it's kind of showing, one, that we're in control of ourselves, first of all. So we're not going to let that tower destroy the world, right? Uh, it's not like, uh, like Daenerys at the end of Game of Thrones. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, control over our instincts, our animal reactions, right? But this card's also the confidence that we are the creators, that you can reach up into the spirit realm and pull down whatever it is that you're manifesting. You can reach up into the night sky and pluck a star right out of the heavens. Okay? You have that power to manifest in your life anything that you wish, anything that you will. Right? And... Um, well, we have to know what that is. You have to be in touch with yourself to kind of to know um, what kind of things you want to manifest, right? This is the courage to do that. This is, this is knowing that we have the power to do that. This isn't the same as doing it. It's not the same as knowing what to do. But I think this, this is what we need, and that is the creative power. The belief in ourselves, the control over ourselves to harness all of this vital magical, creative, spiritual force and fire, channel it into building the life that we want. Yeah. And this is what you're doing. So I think since this is the card of the environment, and this is your relationship with the environment, I think that you are really, you're a force to be reckoned with. I think that you are, you're stepping into this real, um, real, like, confident energy. And I think the people around you are going to notice, wow, some's different. They just seem more vibrant, right? More creative, more just, uh, more like themselves again. Like, like, I don't know, the vitality of youth has returned, you know, that sort of thing. And I, I believe that's going to feel really, really good. Yeah. Um, we've got the 10 of 
wands in the position. This is what we don't want. And this is the overwhelming burden, I think, of somebody else kind of oppressing us, oppressing our energy or keeping us contained, keeping us small, um, trying to convince us that we don't need to aspire so high. And we don't need to leave home. And we don't need to go out and, and have other friends or other relationships or something like that, right? Um, and I think the Ten of Wands is saying we've, we've had enough. We've had enough of this. And this could be coming again from a spouse, could be coming from a parent, could be coming from a boss at work, could be coming from part of our own psyche. Okay. Um, this is that magma reaching like critical mass, you know, and if it do, if nothing changes, well, then we get the tower, we get the negative tower, we get the explosion, the eruption that will happen with this. But I think we've seen enough here that says we're, we're not getting to this point. We're not letting this reach the critical mass that we've realized that enough is enough and we're doing something about it rather than the eruption. You either do something about it or the eruption, right? And this, I think, is that kind of choice. It's the, it's the rock in a hard place choice, which we, the, I don't think the, the hard place is really going to be that hard of a place for you. You know, the card, the, the Ten of Wands, it shows the two choices right there. And it kind of shows that we're being forced into a choice. And we have to make, we have to make a choice now, right? We're kind of, it's all this other energy around that's kind of, it's giving us an ultimatum. We don't want it. We don't want it to be this way. But we find ourselves in this situation and we've got to, we've got to make the choice here. Okay. Um, somebody walks with a limp. Who's the one with the with a limp, or they, they walk with a cane anyway. Maybe they don't have a limp, maybe it's a fashion thing. Uh, but somebody has a bit of a, a bit of a limp, I think. They are using, a, I see them using a cane. Um, sometimes these details come in, I don't know that they relate to the, the reading necessarily, but they are validations and confirmations of the energy that we're in. They're meant for someone out there. If it's not meant for you, that's okay. Just leave it for the next person, yeah. Uh, um, well, the tower card. We got the eye, we got the mouth, right? And it's at the end here. So first I want to ask, um, who's the one with the mouth, right? Um, who's the one that, that has uh, the temper that is difficult to contain? Maybe it's you. Um, maybe it is, it is this other kind of energy. Maybe the two of you kind of bring it out in each other. Right? Maybe you're usually very refined, very in control of yourself, but for some reason, this person knows what buttons to push. And it's, it's hard for us to keep our mouth shut sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I think you're finally seeing, seeing things for what they are. You're seeing the reality of things. And I think you are speaking up for yourself. You are speaking your truth. I feel like this is a prophecy, but I feel like this is you speaking the prophecy. Right. This is you out loud, kind of making the the declaration, making the announcement to the universe of what you're doing, who you are. You know, I am lion. Hear me roar. That sort of thing. You know. Um. And I feel like this is really this is really going to be a big big turning point in your life. I feel like this is the beginning of the rest of your life. Yeah. And uh, it's not to say that this situation was all bad. I'm sure there was a lot of there, you know, a lot of good things that we can say about it. I don't know what. We don't have a lot of cups, right? We don't have any minor arcana cup cards here. So I don't know really what the dynamic was like, except that I see this fire and air stuff. So I feel like it was kind of a volatile uh, energy, but it was under the umbrella of this kind of emotional, personal connection. Okay. So to me, all of these energies together kind of signal like gaslighting. Okay, well, let's look at the mystery card. Let's see what alien Simon Mork Ripley is bringing to us. Maybe this will be some cups energy, some three of cups, nine or ten of cups. I don't think that's going to be talking about that relationship, but about what your future is going to be like for you. What comes after this tower decision moment, right? This ultimatum kind of thing. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. I want to see some good water energy. Really some healthy, connected, harmonious water energy. 
Oh, Wheel of Fortune. Well, that's all right. I'll take the Wheel of Fortune any day of the week. Um, this is timing, first of all. This is the cosmic wristwatch. This is Spirit's timepiece, right? Which, again, I'm not wearing my watch today. Uh, this is saying that everything happens for a reason. Everything happens in its own time. This is when this is meant to happen. Um, all of the time that you spent before now is not wasted time. You were right where you needed to be. It may have felt like you were at the bottom of the wheel. And I think a lot of us have been feeling that way lately. And the bottom of the wheel is where the rubber meets the road, right? And it's like we're just getting kind of run over. We're just getting kind of ground up in that wheel. Um, but the wheel is turning. And now it is your time to come back around to the top. And I think that um, it's your choice, you know? We've got this kind of unfortunate ultimatum. And uh, it's our choice whether we want to live in harmony with this wheel or if we want to choose to be kind of stay stay on the bottom there. I don't, I don't think we do. Um, but it doesn't mean it's an easy decision. It's easy in the sense that we know things are going to be better. Um, but it's still kind of a difficult process to go through right now, you know. But this card is really the promise, uh, the spiritual promise of prosperity, of expansion, of, of love, of, um, of um, rewards, right? Of, not luck, right? But the feeling that we're back in harmony with, with the universe, we're back in the flow, and we're attracting more and more good things in our life. You know, you can call it luck. You know, it's like uh, you, you're finding money on the street, you know, or you just you keep hitting all those green lights. Seems pretty lucky. I don't think it's luck. I think it's a response to the energy we're putting out in the world. If you put out positive, confident, loving, uh, you know, optimistic kind of energy, I feel like the universe is going to give that back to you. Yeah. It's a little bit law of attraction. It's a little bit manifestation, you know. But we're going to do an extended reading, too. If you want to stick around for that, click on the link that's up in the corner, or there's one down in the video description. New readings for Leo every Tuesday and Saturday. But I'm here every day. Come on back. See me tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. And leave a comment for me. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Yeah. I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you and we're all in this together.